The second algorithm we're going to study regarding to automatic memory management is reachability based algorithms. The algorithm we're specifically going to study is known as mark and sweep, where the algorithm proceeds in, in the following fashion. First, you start with some reference or a set of references that are your initial ones. We call those live references, the ones that are currently perhaps in your um, execution. If you remember the, if you recall how we implement the eval func, eval term, you get an initial environment that would be an example of a live environment. Um, but it could also be a set in any in another other programming language. Uh, so you start from a set of initial initial references, which are your live references, and then what you need to figure out is what are all the other references that are reachable via these starting references. So you navigate through those to that graph of a reference points to a data structure which holds which holds another reference or potentially many references, and you mark the the one where you start from. The contained references are the new ones you want to visit. On the new ones, you want to check whether you visited them, them already or not. If you haven't, you go and continue to process them by navigating them, marking them as visited, and then um, going through which references each of them contains and so on. So in the first step, you just mark all the reachable references. Then in the second pass, you go through all the, the references that you've marked as uh, visited are your reachable references, and all the other ones are the ones you can safely reclaim. And this takes care of loops, uh, because if you might have a, um, an example where you have a reference pointing to itself, if that cycle of potentially many references is not reachable via your initial set of references, you can safely discard them, and we're going to see an example of that. So let's look at our first example. If we start from E0, then we, we only have one reference to itself, and that means that E1, E2, and E3 are not reachable via E0 and could be safely reclaimed. Right? Another way to look at this is, let's say we start from E3, in that case, what are our live references, where it's E3, and from E0 you go to E0, E0 is also live, and E0 points to itself, that's already visited, you're done. So E1 and E2 can be safely reclaimed. If you look at the memory usage, if you start from E0, your only live reference is E0, and E1, E2, and E3 can be safely reclaimed. In the second example, let's say we start from E0. From E0, we can safely reclaim, there's only a reference to itself, but if we start from E1, then you would keep E1 and E0, and you could safely remove E2. It really depends where you start in the graph. But as you can see, you draw from each node, you go through the frame and you look at which references are contained there, and then you add edges to those. The nice thing about the mark and sweep um, algorithm is as follows. First, there is no need for allocation, right? You can simply mark um, which locations you need. You don't need to have, you know, an additional um, per reference something to help your algorithm right you don't need any of that you just use the graph that is represent given directly by the reference already in your data structures um, so you you don't need space overhead because you can do everything in in place problem is that reclamation is not predictable right it really depends on your graph of use cases so if you might have um, really large dependencies and you have to go through all of it to mark and then reclaim it. This algorithm assumes 
that nothing is happening in between, that your graph is not changing. So that is something to take into consideration if you, at some point, move your algorithm to now support parallelism, then you would have a big problem there. So these are basically the overview of, of mark and sweep. So this is just another example. If we start from E2, then we would just reference, let's see, E2 points to e, E0, E0 points to nothing. So in this case, only E0 points to E0. E2 points to E0, and if we garbage collect it, we could safely remove one. Um, and that's basically it. In, that's basically it for today. Have a good one.